Welcome to episode 25 of 7 Minutes of Bond Locations. I'm Martin Mulder from the tracks of 007.com and this week we have a very special episode. We're not only celebrating our own uh, 25th episode, but also zoom in on another 25th anniversary. And we do that in style, uh, an extended episode with two special guests. Uh, today's subject, Switzerland. Switzerland is a funny country. Uh, it's in the heart of the European Union, but it's not part of that. And it doesn't even have a capital. Uh, the country is also known as the Swiss Confederation. Schweiz, Swiss, Svizera, Svizera. And on top of that, their mail stamps carry the Latin name Helvetia. Can you still follow me? Switzerland is internationally known for its neutral position in conflicts. It's also the birthplace of the Red Cross, and when they wanted to create a logo, they simply reversed the colors of the Swiss flag. Another thing they're famous for is their banking secrecy, which dates back to the 1700s. Swiss bankers therefore always have a bit of a sketchy image, especially in movies. On a more serious note though, uh, Swiss cities like Zurich, Geneva and Basel rank among the highest in the world in terms of quality of life. And although this also comes with some of the highest costs of living in the world, Switzerland is the country with the highest nominal wealth per adult. Ian Fleming went to university in Geneva and was even briefly engaged there. He apparently spent enough time in Switzerland to fall in love with the country. He would return to Geneva for his Thrilling Cities world tour and even visited his friend Noel Coward, who owned a house on the other side of Lake Geneva. Coward took Fleming to see Charlie Chaplin, who lived nearby, so Fleming could acquire the rights for Chaplin's memoirs to be serialized in the newspaper he worked for. In various of his Bond books, uh, Fleming would bring Bond to Switzerland and he even gave his hero a Swiss mother. The earlier films would follow Fleming's books. Uh, quite precisely, uh, uh, thus establishing an important relationship between 007 and Switzerland. The first Bond film to be partially shot in Switzerland was Goldfinger. Closely following Fleming's book, Bond is tailing his enemy through the Swiss mountains, and these scenes were filmed at the Furka Pass. After being accidentally shot at by Tilly Masterson, Bond befriends her in the valley on the road to Andermatt, before dropping her off at the local gas station. Cast and crew stayed at the Hotel Bergidil, where Connery's room has been meticulously preserved in 60s style and can still be booked today. Bond eventually reaches the Pilatus Aircraft Factory, which doubled for the exterior of Goldfinger's factory in the wide shots. The scenes on the factory grounds were all filmed at Pinewood Studios. This never happened to the other fella. After a few adventures in the Bahamas and in Japan, Bond is back in Switzerland for On Her Majesty's Secret Service. 007 follows a lead to find his arch enemy Blofeld that brings him to Bern the unofficial capital of Switzerland. The scenes involving him breaking into the Gumboldt law firm offices were all filmed in and around Hotel Schweizerhof.
During this film's 50th anniversary celebrations, we were thrilled to bring George Lazenby back to that balcony of room 411, uh, where he uh, filmed his scenes back then. Most of the film's action takes place in the towns of Grindelwald, Lauterbrunnen and Muren. They are all relatively close to another, but I would say Muren is the place to stay when you're location hunting here. The car-free town can be reached by cable car from Steckelberg, but also has a train connection with Lauterbrunnen. In Lauterbrunnen, Bond arrives by train, disguised as Sir Hilary Bray from the College of Arms. It is also here where later on in the film he gets fired at while attempting to telephone London. Grindelwald is in another valley and it was here where they set up the ice skating rink where during the Christmas festivities Bond is rescued by Tracy. Mern is simply stunning, especially if the weather plays along. The breathtaking views you have of the three mountains, Eiger, Jungfrau and Munch, are simply unreal. The Hotel Eiger is the place to stay at, and this is the hotel where most of the cast members stay. Next door is the huge former Palace Hotel, where the crew stayed. Diana Rigg stayed at a private house during the shoot, as did Peter Hunt. Of course, the holy grail of Bond locations is the amazing mountain top lair, Piz Gloria. Owned by the Schildhornbahn Cable Car Company, the revolving restaurant at 3,000 meter height offers 360 degree views of the surrounding Alps. Even though the site has undergone quite a few necessary changes over the years, the actual revolving room, or the, the Alpine room, still looks a lot like the days of the filming. Especially the graded fence above the stairs will ring a bell or two. Because of clever contract negotiations at the time, Pitz Gloria has always been allowed to profit fully from its bond connection, although only in the last decade they seem to really understand that touristic potential. Pitz Gloria now offers a small cinema where parts of the film can be seen, and a walk of fame where many of the cast and crew left their palm prints. The absolute highlight for any Bond fan though is the Bond World Interactive Exhibition. and the toilets are a close second. <laughs> because it will be too much to show you every corner or angle they filmed here, uh, we will leave on Her Majesty's Secret Service behind and move on to the next film. But not before we mention one major discovery that was made about a decade ago. Uh, we're talking about the discovery of the barn, uh, where Bond and Tracy hide from the snowstorm and when they flee from Bro Blofeld the next morning. For decades, nobody seemed to know where it was filmed. And it would take uh, two couples, uh, one from Austria and another one from Germany to find it. And here with me today to tell his remarkable story uh, is Gernot Wolf, Austrian Bond, who, who together with his, his money penny, uh, his wife Birgit, first had to buy and restore a Lotus Esprit before being able to discover that, that location. So let's hear it from the man himself. Hello, Gernot. Hello, Martin. Tell me, what's the story behind the discovery? Uh, so some might know that I owe a Lotus Esprit S1 and the car was completely scrapped when I bought it back in 2004 and needed some restoration works. Uh, so during this time, you, uh, made, I made myself plans what I needed to do after finishing restoration. So I found that traveling with the Lotus could be a good idea. Uh, usually one travels to well-known places like Bern, Lauterbrunnen, Stehelberg, Mürren, and of course the Schildhorn itself. But it was our premier tour, and for 
in us and our lotus, and therefore it needed to have something special. So I absolutely, I absolutely needed to find the barn in which Bond makes the wedding proposal to Tracy. Knowing that this could be a masterpiece for every location in Skull, I checked all the sources I found all over the internet, in books, and several other things. But everything I found was wrong. All the footsteps I followed lost the trail earlier or later. But then I found an information which was different and perhaps promising. Uh, I found in a book that the director of the Shield Home Barn uh, had a relationship to a family living in a barn near to Lake Toon. So uh, this barn was not suitable to do shootings. However, perhaps a suitable one was in the neighborhood. So I took Google Earth and searched millimeter by millimeter and I looked for a single looking barn around the Lake Tune. And I was lucky to find one which had a little chance to fit. We started our tour and hired our German agents and good friends, Hansi and Andrea Zweigle, to join us. Armed with a Walter PPK, a walkie talkie, and two Lotus Esprits, because Hansi also owns a Lotus Esprit, uh, the adventure started. On our long tour, we were driving on the way from Bern to Lauterbrunnen and past Lake Thun. With the coordinates stored in the GPS, we got closer and closer to the barn, but our road, the roads got worse and worse for our vehicles. So no way of thinking we could be on the right track. Uh, Hansi and Andrea driving behind us called us through the walkie-talkie and Andrea said, Gernot, I don't think we will ever find the barn. At this very moment, the barn appeared in front of us and I said, Andrea, we are here. We are here. And 40 years later, after the movie has been shot in spring 2009, we should be the first visiting the barn. What a great home. We enjoyed every minute uh, of this moment and met the owner of the barn. His father owned the barn when filming took place. So he was very surprised to be visited by such crazy Bond fans and couldn't believe the importance of his barn. After visiting the entire farm, we knew that we really have found a very special location. It was actually a highlight that I wanted to get for my premier ride with the Lotus Esprit. In the meantime, the owner of the barn is aware of the importance of his barn and has created a famous James Bond cheese. You can get there this cheese uh, as a great souvenir and it tastes very good. So I highly recommend to visit the barn and the owner and his family. I'm sure that you will be as thrilled as we were back in 2009. So this is the story. 
Gernot, thank you so much for sharing that wonderful story. Uh, take care. Oh, no. Thank you too. Thank you. It would then take uh, more than 25 years before 007 would return. This time, however, Switzerland doubled for Russia. Just above Lago Maggiore, you will find the Verzaska or Contra Dam that was used in the opening scene of Goldeneye. Soon after the film was released, Tracking Outdoor team started offering the possibility to replicate what they call the most famous bungee jump in the world. For just under 230 euros, you can feel like 007 for about 4 seconds. Of course, there's a lot more to say about Switzerland. Uh, as I told you at the start of this video, we would have two special guests today. Uh, you already saw Gerno, so it's about time we have a chat with our second guest. Here to talk about his country and that other anniversary, Marcus Hartmann. Hi, good afternoon, welcome. Uh, nice hello. to be on your show, <laughs> Martin. As the president of the Swiss James Bond Club, you must be happy and proud that Switzerland has featured so many times in the Bond films. What do you think keeps uh, the Bond people uh, come back here every time? Oh, that's, that's a good question and we always have to stick to the, to the minutes, I know. Uh, but in fact, we are really happy and proud that uh, Switzerland was featured in several Bond movies. And, but uh, there's some smaller gems that probably not everybody knows that they even were filmed in Switzerland. And the big ones talking about Goldfinger and obviously about on her emergency secret service. And to answer your question, I know, I think the answer who was on our 50th Jubilee uh, in 2019 knows the answer because that was full of surprises, location, good friends. And the crown jewel, or uh, if you want, was the Pitz Gloria at the end of the day on top of Shilton. I mean, that's a place where it works to go back and back and back. I you think know? there must be a, a good reason about it as well. I mean, I just after many years, I just finished to read the novel from Ian Fleming again on her Mighty Secret Service, and I was surprised how many details from the novel actually got on the big screen, more wow. than many other movies. Uh, well, it was not Schildhorn, it was somewhere, another place in Canton Gabünden next to Davos, but it was very accurate and uh, where the, the baddie was sitting and I was reading the book and I said, wow, that's surprisingly how much of that actually made it into the final movie. I did notice that whenever Switzerland is mentioned, it's often connected to banking or shady bank accounts. Uh, is that still what you're most famous for? Gosh, I hope not. Um, to give an example, but just, I just had to read chocolates to get into the spirit. That's one of our... Uh, I, I, I hope we are known for that as well, besides the swatches and cheese and uh, you mentioned the scenery, of course. Um, Funny for us, for Swiss, was the small scene, it's not about Switzerland, but the Swiss banker in Casino Royale, when he handed over the, and he was German, uh, <laughs> nothing against German, I loved Germans, but I said, why, is there no Swiss banker or actor who can play a Swiss banker? So it's a funny, <laughs> did you broke chocolates? <laughs> no, I said, well, no. <laughs> That's not a real squeeze. Well, it was funny in some ways, yeah, sure. <laughs> this episode already showed a lot of Bond locations. Uh, is there any place in Switzerland that you can recommend to Eon as a filming location? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, there's this, in, but I, I know, I think there already have been some location, no location hunters, sorry, some scouts in Switzerland for other places, like this is Golden uh, Hotel next to in Davos. Uh, I don't know the name yet. It's, it looks like an Easter egg. And I always thought that must be look spectacular in a Bond movie. Um, could imagine that I have already visited. Uh, all the place around Lucerne, beautiful place, the mountains we have everywhere. It's more this time about to get all the permission from everywhere to build up a big, uh, uh, a big movie like that. I mean... Right. I couldn't imagine to to get a movie done like on her merchant secret service for months with the shooting down because it's just too famous, too too big. We yeah. would love it always, of course, but uh, it's a good question. I 
I was thinking of all the places they have already used, which was spectacular, but Switzerland is not that big. Um, mm. They made a good cutter out of it. Right. But they're always welcome to come <laughs> back. Oh, they will. This year, the Swiss James Bond Club celebrates its 25th anniversary. So congratulations with that. Uh, so it must have been established in 1996, right after GoldenEye. Uh, do you know if that was the reason to start a Swiss James Bond Club? Ooh, I wouldn't need to get into the, into the story again, because I wasn't even in the, in the club at that time. Mm -hmm. um, it's about that time uh, when they were... Uh, Ernst Wodkla, the first president of the club, was living in Vienna now. Um, the, there was a lot of media interest about the new bond coming up after several years, you know, about this yeah. long gap of six years. And they were searching if there was something in the country as, uh, established, which wasn't. So that was the beginning. They said, let's try our own club. And uh, I mean, obviously, in 96, you didn't have... Uh, the same options like today, you know, with Google search and internet and stuff. So it was a lot of research and bit by bit, it, uh, it, it was growing. And we are, we are very happy to celebrate this year, as you're saying, the 25th Jubilee, which, which is a very nice coincidence with the 25th official movie, if yeah. No Time to Die, if, it's, if it hits the cinema still this year, which we hope for. Um, but I think there was a, a good reason. And I know that they have met P.S. Brosnan in Switzerland when, when he was on a promo tour. And there's another story I could tell you for hours, but we don't have the time. I mean, the stuff you could do then, yeah. you couldn't do today. I mean, they were just walking into the, uh, into the hotel, pretending to work as uh, for, you know, like agents, you know, for, for a magazine which they did, in fact, and they met him and they had a long talk and he was very mind open and so welcome. And I think he even is, but you just can't go, get that close without, you know, passing all security yeah. and stuff. When did you join the club yourself? Uh, I'm since 2008, I think, in the club. And uh, then I was one year in the board as consultant. And since 2013, so that's my eight years as president. I know the Swiss Bond Club is a very active club. Uh, you organized quite a few events uh, over the, the, the years. Uh, I did join you on a few occasions in the past, and it's always been very entertaining and, and very well organized. Do you have any special plans for this anniversary year? Um, as we were celebrating our 25 years, I started last year to, because we were already in this whole situation that we still are, all of us. So I said, how can I invest my time and my energy to create something which is, you know, not useless, which we can use in, in, in the year to come, which is now. So I started out to, to write and to call to all possible people who worked in the, in the Bond movies you know, like to say, if they might be interested to send a short video message, uh, happy birthday, James Bond Club Switzerland, and stuff like that. And I had no idea who, who might join, if anybody's interested or everybody says, ah, come on, Marcus, leave us alone. <laughs> Better things to do than that. So it was really from the scratch. And it was, you know, obviously you first start to get hold of people that you know, that we became friends with you, with many people, especially who we met over the last years. So as a natural approach, I first contacted the people I already knew personally. So I thought, okay, there might be a chance to get three, four video messages, and then we will see what, if we can get something out of that. But I had no idea what will happen. And so the, the story will go for hours because it was literally eight months, you know, after the first positive feedbacks, I become a bit more brave and then I start to write to this guy or this agent and at the end of, I literally wrote to everybody I could get hold on and at the end it was like a few hundred emails and I sent out like 70, 80 mails um, uh, to everybody all over the world still waiting for a lot of replies and to make a long story short um, the main goal was 
25 years, that's no spoiler. It would be great to get 25 video messages. I had no idea how to achieve that. And as the days were coming end of year to close it up, at the end, we got 50 video messages, wow. which was the double of what I was expecting. So, and now the tricky thing is nobody knows, especially except two people who actually did the editing um, and the music, the scoring of the music. Even my board members have no idea. I'm not going to reveal it today, neither. Who is in that final Jubilee video? Because I want to have to make a surprise for everybody. And we're planning to do an event on the 1st of May at the moment. But, you know, it's a bit tricky because we don't know yet if the restaurant will be open, if you're allowed to do an event, if we have to postpone it again to late autumn. I don't know. But uh, I definitely want to do it this year. At the worst, we just send out the link to everybody. But it was so much passion and time involved that I really wanted to create a small event around that to show it to everybody. Everybody, I mean, at least the people who are uh, allowed to, to participate and maybe yeah. some surprise mm -hmm. guests. And later that year, um, we're planning to do a, a small Swiss premiere of No Time to Die for our members. Many, I think not, e not even all Swiss know that there were some scenes shot also in Switzerland, which obviously the movie were doubled for other locations. Like in the opening scene, one part of the spy who loved me, of the chasing scene was filmed in Switzerland, in the, the glacier, Beats Panina. Um, and uh, also Few to Kill, when Bond was snowboarding, a small right. piece. For a small country like Switzerland, five Bond movies and two big ones, um, it's, it's not bad. But of, obviously, there are so many more connections with Bond and Switzerland, uh, like it, the novels you, you, you mentioned, the uh, Bond's mother, Monique mm -hmm. Delacroix, who comes from Canton, but we have the first Bond girl, Ursula Andres, who's from Switzerland, mm -hmm. um, Mark Forster, the director, some actors, um, and Roger Moore, obviously, who lived a lot of his time in, in Stadt first and in Kromatana. Um, so, yeah, that makes us very proud. And I think we have a good reason to, to have a club here, which is still active and hope will go on for many years to come. Marcus, thank you so much for, uh, for your contribution to this episode. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure and honor. <laughs> I think we're all looking forward to your next club event. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, what are you doing in my room? Bunt, can I talk to Ernst, please? Yeah. Ernst? Yes? One of your patients stuck into my room. Hilly! You really need to do something about him. It's me, Hilly. I know, buddy. Uh, just hold on, relax, sit down. They're here in a minute. Just hurry! <coughs> Sorry about this. Uh, Hilly did bring us to the end of the episode final one of the original 25. Uh, looking forward to making a few more, uh, as long as nobody disturbs my sleep. So, take care for now. <sighs> Thanks for watching. See you next time.
Check out on the tracks of 007.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.